Um, welcome everybody to Udet's ad hoc session. We finally got it going, so enjoy. So, uh, my turn? Yes, it is. It's all um, you now. Okay, thanks. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ralf. Um I want to, to do this in, uh, in three steps. Uh, at first, I want to tell something about my motivation. Uh, in the second step, I would like to, to present a bit uh, how uh, stuff is uh, thought. And in the third step, I want to show an example which might point out uh, a few implications. Um, so, yeah, uh, is my video uh, working? I don't see myself in the live stream. Hello? Anyone still here? Nettie? Okay, at least I hear myself. Um, okay, I seem not to be able uh, so I see my own video, but I don't see it in the live stream. So I assume there's still a little problem, uh, but I think that should not uh, be the problem uh, for me explaining my motivation. Uh, so before a few years, I started to uh, to realize uh, that probably with how we think uh, functionality, we cannot really model uh, things uh, we see when we are looking into nature. Uh, and also we have uh, quite a few problems in informatics, uh, as I see it, uh, with uh, utilizing our today's uh, CPUs uh, with multiple cores. Ah, now you can see me. That's perfect. Um, so I started to, to first uh, do classic simulations um i created a software called simulation studio this was kind of a proof of concept uh, simulating uh doing symmetric simulations physical simulations on gpus using opencl uh, but the problem with this was it couldn't really really uh, convince me that it is what i observe when i look into nature uh, so I searched a bit further. Uh, I stumbled over the actor model, um, but also this couldn't really satisfy me. Uh, so I started to think uh, if the way how we how we think functionality might be the suitable one to model uh, certain things observed in nature. Um, so finally, I came up with an approach to to split time more or less in what we know as causality but uh, thinking it more as a branch instead of, uh, of a string uh, and this is basically what i want to to present you now um where is it here it is oh, come on okay my share your screen button is not working uh i fear i need to rejoin this the jitsi se session uh well share the screen uh block temporarily okay that's the reason uh so okay um the presentation hopefully is seen now um Okay, uh, so at first I want to introduce you to a German word uh, which is called Wirkung. Uh, 
sadly, I, I didn't found an adequate translation to English. Uh, so uh, first, I seem to need to describe the idea of Wirkung. Um, the German word de Wirkung describes how cause leads to effect. Now you might think uh, it's about mechani the, a mechanism uh, about what uh, the way how something happens, but it is not only that uh, because it also depends on the circumstances uh, this mechanism is processed in. So. Uh, causal dynamics uh, is basically the idea uh, to describe this Wirkung uh, and its dependencies on data. So how, how I said, uh, there are circumstances, a mechanism uh, gets processed in and these circumstances uh, are basically data. So uh, when I have some mechanism, uh, what it does strongly depends on what data it gets. Um, there is uh, something interesting about data, uh, what uh, we can strongly observe in informatics. Um, and uh, we probably also can observe in nature uh, when we think a bit uh, about uh, quantum uh, physics. Um, data seems to be exclusive. So uh, it seems that you cannot have two mechanisms uh, working on data at the same time. And I assume also in physics, it might turn out one day uh, that when two things are interacting, uh, there cannot be uh, another interaction happening on the same thing. Um, we know this problem practically from informatics. Uh, when we do multi-threading, we need to synchronize. Um, yes. So what, what is the difference between uh, thinking uh, algorithmic uh, functional, how we are used to do or thinking it's uh, causal. Uh, functional algorithmic always converges towards uh, linearity. Uh, what is basically caused by uh, a function having one return value and multiple parameters. Uh, so we get from many to one. Um, while causal algorithmic is more to be seen like um, like a function or a procedure uh, to be more precise uh, so a function without return value uh, but uh, taking uh, in out parameters or in out references to memory uh, so such procedures in uh, causal dynamics are called uh, ticks uh, we will uh, tighten that down a bit later. Um, and then there is something we don't know in informatics uh, yet, uh, what we know in real world, uh, and this is uh, the uncertainty of uh, something. Uh, so what is uncertainty? Uh, well, uh, in, in, in real world, uh, we struggle often uh, with uncertainty and uh, or something being uncertain or something being unsharp. Uh, well, Heisenberg uh, really meant that things are uncertain and not unsharp, but this is also kind of, uh, of a philosophic uh, struggle. Um, in practically in informatics, uh, it means uh, we can have a reference which is uh, shared between uh, different uh, aspects of a system, uh, but uh, is not pointing anywhere. Um, so let's uh, continue with a few definitions. Uh, 
An aspect is a piece of data describing some exclusive systems data, while a system can consist of multiple aspects. So if I take a human, uh, a human has uh, eyes, has nose, has hands, uh, a lot of aspects and each of these aspects uh, can do something different at the same time, so concur uh, concurrent. Uh, such an aspect, uh, as in systems we know, uh, usually is uh, is quite uh, very certain. Uh, as we know from quantum physics, uh, things doesn't need to be certain. Um, aspects can can be nested, so that means if you take a hand of a human, well, the hand is uh, an aspect of the system human, uh, while the finger is an aspect of the system hand. Uh, so uh, we have a, a nested uh, a nested hierarchy of aspects. Uh, and they can be uh, entangled in quantum physics. Uh, we call that entangled, uh, what basically means two systems are sharing uh, an aspect uh, and these uh, systems need not to be at the same place. Um, a tick, and the tick is now uh, this procedure I talked about previously. Um, and it defines how data is modified. Uh, so a simple tick uh, by uh, at the clock would be uh, move uh, move a handle uh, by uh, 360 divided uh, by 60 degree. Uh, so just a tick as we, <laughs> yes. Uh, would call it uh, in context of a clock. Um, here is the point where where this German word Wirkung kicks in. Uh, this Wirkung uh, is basically the a tick getting processed in a certain context of data. Uh, while Wirkung uh, is not only this uh, this a single act uh, we could say in meaning of informatics where we intend what happens uh, but also includes uh, everything consecutive uh, so if i if i uh, have such a nice domino track uh, we sometimes see in tv um, and i uh, i bring the whole thing into moving, uh, the Wirkung is not only one stone uh, falling, but the Wirkung is the whole thing falling, at least if it is done well. Um, and a branch uh, is basically what uh, we can see as the whole of a Wirkung. Uh, it is from the beginning act, uh, from the beginning cause to all consecutive causes until the last effect. So I want to, to show with this slide a bit uh, a systematic of, of the aspects. Uh, so we can have uh, an aspect uh, which is uh, just existing but uncertain. Uh, so that basically means we know there is something but we have no idea what is there and probably it is also not decided what is there. Uh, for informatics, this uncertainty doesn't play a huge role uh, since uh, well, probably once it will, but for now it doesn't play a role, uh, except we are speaking about quantum computers. Um, then we can have uh, an atomic aspect, what basically means there is no nested aspect anymore, but just uh, some atomic values uh, which cannot be shared. Um, an example would be for an electron 
not really an electron, but the impulse of an electron, this is quite very atomic. Uh, this doesn't contain anything, uh, while the electron itself uh, has an impulse and uh, a position and uh, some uh, from quantum physics we know uh, we can cannot know both at the same time. Um, so this is the detailed aspect. So the electron would basically be a detailed aspect uh, of a system. Uh, what means it contains another two aspects or probably more, uh, the impulse and the position. Uh, and then we can have entangled aspects. So the electron has, for example, also a spin. And uh, here we have the very nice effect that uh, we can have two electrons uh, which uh, previously uncertain spin and then uh, not the same, but the exactly opposite spin. Uh, this is also very well shown uh, by experimental uh, attempts. Uh, so now we are coming to the tick. The tick is uh, well a procedure taking uh, taking uh, aspects, uh, being able to modify these aspects, but not necessarily, and uh, causing consecutive ticks. Not only one, but probably more. Uh, and this is also the, re uh, the reason why we probably don't want to think causality linear. Uh, so in a sequence, uh, as we usually do, we say, okay, there's, uh, there's a cause and there's an effect, and this effect can be the cause for another effect and so on. Uh, but we probably have a cause which has multiple effects, which again uh, causes multiple effects. Um, if we bring this all together, we get a branch. Uh, here, the branch is uh, shown quite sequential, so it is uh, easier to 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 get the point. Um, yeah, this here we don't really need to talk a lot about. Uh, I think it's quite clear. Um, and then we can also have entangled branches, uh, what basically means we have two systems uh, which uh, are in their self uh, own causality. So there is happening something within these systems. Uh, and there is some interfacing between the systems what entangles these systems. Uh, so, and then we need to think about order of, of execution, which uh, is uh, which is strongly influenced by this exclusivity of information. Uh, what basically means uh, when uh, tick one and tick n uh, are executed, and uh, well, tick one in, in this in this figure we see a tick one. Uh, which is uh, acting on an aspect one and then on an aspect two. And this tick one uh, causes a tick two and a tick n. And uh, this tick two would act on aspect two and aspect three. And tick n would act on aspect three and aspect n. And uh, the thing is, tick two and tick n cannot run concurrent since they sh are sharing an aspect. Uh, so there has uh, there is some kind of natural order given by this exclusivity principle. Uh, so this was the presentation. Uh, I hope you are here. I, I will check now the Etherpad for questions. There are none. Uh, so I'm checking the channel. Uh, okay, I don't see questions for now. Uh, does anyone have uh, questions uh, so far? I assume I need to wait now a bit. Uh -huh, I don't see my cam. No.
Okay, and then uh, let's continue. Uh, if there are coming uh, questions, uh, now I see my IRC uh, and also uh, can switch now to the Etherpad. Uh, LibreOffice occupied my whole screen, so it was a bit hard previously. Um, I will now uh, show an example. This example is, uh, is about, uh, let me... Where is it? Okay, I don't I don't see uh, my application in in the sharing uh, selection. Uh, probably I try to restart it outside of my IDE. Ah, here it is. No, this is Tilix. This I don't want to have. That's quite interesting. I cannot see uh, my GTK application in uh, in, in this uh, sharing drop-down box from uh, of Firefox. That's quite interesting. Probably when I overlap them, no. Not really. Ah, probably I need to start it by F2. Um, F2. Oh my God. Oh. I don't have it in pass. Okay, I will share the whole screen, then probably it will work. So, I hope it is, oh. Okay, it wants to share all of my screens. That's probably also not what I want. Uh, is the uh, Natty? Are you still there? Yes, I am. Uh, do you have any idea how I can share an applic a GTK application which is not started directly? But sort um, of like I had this problem myself a few days ago. I'm going to ask the person who fixed it um, <laughs> because it, it it seemed like a sort of one line com one line command thing. I'll be right back. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm just the messenger, but uh, 
Uh, so, Ralf? Yeah. Okay, so in capitals, GTK. Uh, okay. Underscore. GTK underscore. Front end. Yeah. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I've just been told back end. I, I think I might just get the relevant person here. One moment. Um, I'm, if you look in the speaker desk channel, I think I'll just, uh, I'll just write it in there rather than. Okay. Thanks. Okay, look in the look in the uh, should be there on ILC. No, it doesn't seem so. Oh, sorry. No problem. Um, I'm probably using an export, but GTPK back end X11. Tilix is here. Okay, I will try to start this using uh, F2, probably then I get it. Oh, 
this works out. No. That's interesting. I don't get the application in sharing. I get the Tilix terminal, which is also a GTK application. But I don't get my application. Oh, meanwhile, we have a question yeah. from IRC. OK. Um, so, ist Wirkung wie das Pauli-Prinzip, wie Austauschwechselwirkung bzw. Wirkungsquerschnitt? Um, well, uh, the Pauli-Prinzip is about a Wirkung. Uh, a Wirkungsquerschnitt is, uh, is about the probability of a Wirkung. Uh, so, yes, it is uh, the same uh, Wirkung, the same word meant, and it is about uh, about a cause leading to an effect. Uh, so uh, probably, if we uh, if we take the uh, how is it called uh, uh, w when you have a, a photon uh, of a certain energy, uh, you you require a, uh, for for causing something you require a minimum energy. Uh, Einstein uh, got his Nobel Prize for this, I think. Uh, he showed that you need uh, at least blue light to uh, to cause anything on a uh, on a, go a gold atom in a gold atom. Uh, I have a huge screen, but I will try to to limit my desktop only to the full HD screen. So then I could share my whole screen, yes. So display settings, let's turn off the huge screen. Uh, I want to save it. Save it, save it, save it. Still not this a passing display. So this one. Okay, and now enter a screen. Allow. So let's see. Uh, you see my screen now? Yes, we do. Um, if you want, um, if you want people to also see your face, just click on the camera icon as well. Ah, uh, okay. Here we go. Hooray! So, okay, that's perfect. Uh, okay, so the application you will see now uh, is uh, doing not many things, uh, but it is uh, doing them in a probably interesting way. Uh, so here we have a, a graph, this graph, uh, which is uh, describing uh, a matrix uh, of 101 by 101 uh, objects, nodes, uh, which are interconnected uh, with each other. Uh, so each node is connected to the node uh, above, uh, below, at the left, and at the right. Um, and the border nodes in this case are fixed. Um, what this means? Uh, you will see uh, it's about oscillators. So probably uh, a few of you know from uh, physics physics lessons. Uh, Ive, could this... you uh, could you just make the font a bit bigger? I think people are having difficulty ah, seeing. Sorry. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, how the heck? That's interesting. Uh, in GNOME Editor, how to zoom? Ah, okay. Probably it's better this way. Uh, so, I would say even bigger, please. Like make it about twenty points. Ah, okay. Yes, references. Uh,
So, oh, that's probably... That's, that's very big, but that that's fine. People can see now, I think. Okay. Uh, so each line uh, presents an oscillator. If you, uh, from physics probably, uh, from physics lessons, you would probably know this, uh, this uh, mechanism. Uh, you have uh, on a on a pipe uh, there are there are road weights uh, which are connected with springs, and if you push one of these weights, uh, then you get a wave which is uh, traveling uh, along the along the uh, the pipe, um, and at the end it reflects and comes back, and you. Uh, have this game until uh, the momentum is gone. Um, if you imagine this in two dimensions, then you get a matrix uh, of oscillators. Uh, and if you push one, then uh, it causes not only uh, the left and the right one to change its impulse, but uh, also the above and the below. Uh, so this graph is graph basically describes such a matrix. Uh, you could also see it as a brain if it's uh, easier. And uh, the, how said, the, the borders of this brain are fixed. Uh, so let's go to the application. This application basically loads this dot file. Uh, at the left pane, uh, you see you see two, two blue dots, uh, which are marking the the center of the fuse uh, on the left pane you have see the impulse the negative uh, the positive and the negative impulse the positive impulse is in red and uh, the negative impulse is complementary and on the right side you have a pane which uh, shows the the elongation uh, again, the positive elongation is red, and the negative elongation is uh, is cyan, basically. Uh, so, if I push here in the middle now, uh, you see there is a quite nice wave going through. So, as how, how said, this is uh, this is a matrix of oscillators. Uh, there is no wave function involved there is even no float or double involved. This is a pure integer version of, uh, of a feather equation. Um, and yeah, you see basically waves are reflected at the, at the borders. Uh, they are interfering. Uh, you could also push cause a bit more waves. Uh, you see the brain is moving up and then it is moving down, uh, and you have a lot of interferences now. <laughs> um, so this is a, just a, a small example uh, of what you could do uh, with causal dynamics, uh, and what is happening in behind here. We. Uh, might see now in this file here. Uh, so I need to check if there are some questions. Nothing on ILC at the moment. Ah, okay. Perfect. Uh, so this is the program. It is a bit uh, so. What you see uh, actually seen was distributed across seven cores, uh, and uh, it's basically you have a, a class uh, oscillator which has a model uh, with impulse elongation, uh, heat. Uh, the interesting thing is the system knows uh, knows something like entropy. Um, and these oscillators are interconnected by springs, which have a feather rate. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is a only one tick causality. So that means 
there is only one effective tick, which is uh, doing nothing but uh, applying uh, the, the, the elongation of one uh, oscillator to, uh, to its neighbors. So uh, basically uh, pronouncing its impulse, uh, passing it further. Um, it is, this is just, uh, just, uh, the feather, uh, the feather, of the formula for feather force, um, nothing really special. It is an integer variant, uh, where we get this, uh, this leftover energy, uh, which is caused by, uh, by integer division, uh, here simply called uh, using the modulo uh, as heat. So this is basically the entropy. Uh, so this system really loses uh, energy by the effect that it cannot uh, cannot uh, utilize energy packages which are too small. Uh, so probably what we observe in quantum physics. Um, and after it is applying this uh, or passing the energy to the neighbors, uh, it is uh, calling or it is causing the itself. Uh, here we go. It is causing itself uh, on the neighbored oscillators. Um, so th this is quite uh, quite simple. It is uh, it is symmetric. Uh, causal uh, runtime is uh, more dedicated to asymmetric use cases, uh, but this is uh, simply some some uh, Grenzfall, um, some corner case, uh, some corner case um, uh, of a symmetric uh, system of a symmetric simulation. Um, the point about this is to show uh, that. Uh, it is possible in such a system to to distribute the or to scale the work quite very automatically to to multiple cores. Uh, this is a self-limiting system, so there might be a limit on how many cores it can run. Um, probably a mathematician would be able to also calculate. Uh, on how many cores this can effectively run. Uh, I didn't. Um, yeah, uh, you could do with this uh, also different stuff. So you could also do something like a multi-threaded version of an automatically multi-threaded version of uh, Game of Life. So. This is also running on multiple cores. Uh, it is no for loop. It is using the also only one tick. Uh, very same principle like the oscillator example. Uh, these examples are more or less to to prove that uh, the runtime is capable of uh, of covering this corner case of a symmetric system. Uh, which uh, you might uh, you might believe it or not uh, is quite harder than an asymmetric system. Uh, harder in because uh, such a system has a has, has a variable meaning of time. Uh, so time is basically uh, this uh, this consecutive follow up uh, of ticks. An asymmetric system doesn't require to the time to be that precisely synchronized, like for example, Gol or uh, in this case, uh, such a wave. Uh, so, uh, if you mess up order uh, in scheduling, then you mess up this uh, circle. There is no pi, no no constant nothing this uh, very nice circuit is really just appearing because uh things are getting executed in the right order um yes 
Uh, I hope now there are any questions. <laughs> um, Still nothing on IRC. Um, is there anything on the Etherpad? Uh, I, ah, okay. Is you can, ah, yeah, the, uh, what, the question you mentioned before. Yeah, I think I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Um, well, I, I hope I could uh, wake the interest uh, for someone uh, to to play with such systems. I think they they enable us to do things we cannot think in a classical way. Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Someone is interested. Uh, well, uh, have you given people your contact details so that they can talk to you afterwards, or? Um, uh, yes, uh, on the, I, uh, my GitLab instance is mentioned uh, on, uh, on the talks uh, page. Uh, there is a question uh, if it is uh, free software, it is licensed uh, GNU AGPR. So, yes, it is free software, even a bit more restrictive than necessary. Okay, uh, if that's everything, shall we, shall we thank the audience for bearing with us over the, over the technical difficulties and thank you all for coming. Thank you for hosting I thank, us. I thank you all uh, for listening and uh, also you for moderating. Yeah, that was, that was accidental. Um, <laughs> well, so, honestly, I'm glad because uh, I'm not that experienced with uh, such stuff and I'm also not the, the empathic communicative guy, so well, we do I'm what glad we can. if is on my side. <laughs> we do what we can. So, yeah, thank you all for coming. The next, um, the next ad hoc session is at 1400 UTC. Uh, but at that point, also, the main track resumes in English. So, thank you all very much, and Thanks. see you later. See you later. Bye.